All right, internet friends, this is Jim at Small Time Outlaws, and welcome to the 13th video in the my tutorial series on beginning programming in Monkey. In this video, we're going to be learning about the multi-dimensional array. Now, this is something I guess asked about a lot, because a lot of programming languages will s simplify the creation of the multi-dimensional array quite a bit to make it easy on the user. But in Monkey, yeah, but Mark, I think, likes to likes us to have as much control as possible. So, yeah, we have to do it the hard way, but at the end of the day, it's nicer once you figure it. Once you learn how to do it. So now we're gonna start creating a regular array. We're gonna call this array stuff. And so, with when it just has the single pair of brackets, that's a single or a one-dimensional array, which is what we're used to. Now to make, create a two-dimensional array, you just add another set of brackets. And if you want to create a three-dimensional, four-dimensional, five-dimensional, but we're just going to go with two. Now to initialize the size of this array, this is where Monkey gets a little complicated. For the first array, you can set the size in there, if inside that bracket if you want. But you can't set a size here. Can't, after this first one you can't do it anymore because after this it's not an array of integers it's an array of arrays that's what this means this is an array of arrays and so they need to be initialized separately and an, an alternative way to initialize the size of this array if you want to do it later on in your code you just set stuff to stuff dot resize and to size your array and this will initialize it with an empty array of size 5. Now, now that you have this first array, and we can think of these as rows and columns, so we're going to, or I think it's columns and rows in Monkey, so we're going to think of this, no, it's rows and columns. Yeah, rows and columns. Okay, so this is your rows, and these are your columns. So we've just created five rows of nothing. So we need to initialize our columns. So the way to do that is, there's, unfortunately there's no other way to do it in monkey you have to iterate through the array and we're going to use a regular numerical for loop for this create our local i set it to the first index zero and go until which remember means to go up to but not include we'll do stuff dot length so we get all every row and then we are going to initialize each row using that index i as a new array of integers of size 5. So basically what we've done in memory up to this now instead of having five rows of nothing we've now got five rows of five integers. So this is what your memory looks like right now. Alternatively, if you don't want to set aside all this memory, this is where this style of array initialization comes in handy. You can set this to something like i plus 1. What this is going to do is create an array of size 1, if that's all you need, for the first one. Array of size 2 for the next one, 3 for that one, 4 for that one, and the 5 for that. So this is what it will look like in memory. And so it's like... I only want to have one thing for this, and then two for this one, and three for this one. You cut the memory usage in half. So that's one advantage to this, the way that monkeys arrays are initialized. So that's the two-dimensional array. Well, let's say you want to do a three-dimensional array. So first you go up here to the top, tell monkey, hey, this is a three-dimensional array. You can leave this as it is. Now, down here, you're going to initialize your row instead of a new, and we're going to change this back. Instead of creating rows of ints, you're now going to create rows of integer arrays. So you've got to add another bracket there to say, hey, this is an integer array, or this is an array of integer arrays. Now you have to loop through each of those and initialize them as integer arrays. So we'll create, sorry about that, we'll create a four and you have to use a different variable here because you can see your i is within this scope so you need to create a different one so there's no conflict and we will say zero until stuff now you're going to use the arrays you're working with here that you just 
just initialized to get its length, which will be 5 in this case. And you're going to set each of those to be an array of size 5. We'll end that. And now let's go run that, make sure I don't have any errors. Good to go. And so you can see now that we have a three dimensional array, the way you access or you can access and set values, you're going to go by row, then by column, and then you're going to go depth. Inside, it's like a five by five by five cube. So it's like length, width, height. And you're going to, so we're going to stick some random number in the middle of this cube. And that's, that's pretty much it for the multi dimensional array. And now I'm going to touch on something that I should have gone over way, way back. I can't believe I forgot to do this. But what I'm going to go over right now real fast, and it's not really related to arrays at all, but it's called code commenting. Now, if you don't know what code commenting is, pretty much it's just a way to hide text from the translator or compiler. So it's typically used to tell the reader what's the intent of a certain chunk of code. So we can say up here at the top of our for loops, we'll say this is where we are, this is where we are initializing uh, spelling our arrays, hopefully. That's, and that's the apostrophe character. Let's just do a single line comment. Now if you wanted to do a whole block of text commented out, you use the pound. We're going to put it up here. This is often used to kind of describe what's going on in the file, do like copyright information, stuff like that. Uh, so you're going to use the pound character, then the rem keyword, which stands for remarks, and then you're going to end it with the end once again. And this allows you to just type all kinds of things. That is a great block of comment. Block and you can do stuff like hey this is my multi dimensional array tutorial file by Jim yeah, yeah there's comments and there's multi dimensional arrays and I think this is it for the beginning programming series you're ready to go on to the advanced so see you there uh, once again as always, email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com if you have any questions or leave questions in the comments below.